Welcome everyone on this uh, rather warm late autumn early evening in New York. I am thrilled and astonished to know that tonight is our 28th Zoom panel discussion. The development of our online programming and these Zoom discussions have enabled us to connect with a far, far broader audience internationally and domestically, both live and then via our website and on YouTube long after our exhibitions close. Happily, it also enables us to bring together artists and experts from distant locations to join for a moment in time to both educate and captivate you, our audience. Tonight's topic of Japanese women's ceramics and the world of Japanese clay art will be approached from four points of view, academic, curatorial, personal collecting, and artistic vision. This evening, our guest artist, Hayashi Kaku Sensei, will be speaking to us live from Tokyo with her interpreter, her daughter, Yahaba Emi, actually from Yokohama, but to us, it sort of seems greater Tokyo. They have awakened really quite early to be with us tonight. In addition, we are joined by illustrious scholar and curator, Professor Todate Kazuko of Tama Art University. But due to a prior commitment on her part, she will be joining us via a video recording. From even more distant Adelaide, Australia, will be Russell, or Rusty as we know him, Kelty, curator of Asian art at the Art Gallery of South Australia. Finally, hailing from relatively nearby North Carolina, will be uh, Dr. Mina Levin, a passionate and insightful collector of Japanese contemporary ceramics and international art glass. She serves on several boards and has traveled several times to Japan, most recently with me a few weeks ago. Hence, we have a truly international panel with us tonight, mm -hmm. and surely this mm -hmm. is the enormous benefit of our now Zoom mm -hmm. lifestyle. Awesome. As to our audience, it is as global as our panelists. We have over 300 registrants from 16 countries, including unsurprisingly Japan and a large contingent from Australia, both joining us early this morning. Good day to you all. But also from Singapore, Mexico, Netherlands, France, Germany, Denmark, the UK, Ireland, Greece, and for the very first time, the Czech Republic among other countries, located far afield from either Japan or America. Within the US, 32 of the 50 states plus Washington DC are represented tonight. Included in this incredibly diverse audience are a range of museum professionals, such as docents, conservators, collection managers, and quite notably, a significant number of curators and directors from both domestic and international museums. Your interest in this discussion and your attendance tonight is a real tribute to the panelists of this event who together have drawn such an international knowledgeable and dare I say passionate audience. Our viewers are also comprised of art appraisers, professors, scholars, interior designers, art dealers, prominent art collectors and artists of all media, but most especially of clay. Welcome to everyone who has gathered from near and far and who will bring their unique perspectives to this event this evening. We will welcome your comments and questions via the question and answer function at the bottom of your screen, and we will address those following the main discussion, which should last about 70 plus minutes. Since Todate Sensei will not be with us live tonight, you may also submit questions to her in either English or Japanese, and we will forward them on your behalf. So let's get started. Uh, perhaps the greatest development in the past half century in the field of contemporary clay in Japan has been the emergence of Japanese women ceramicists in this previously male dominated field. Emerging from centuries of obscurity and isolation, the female masters of clay are challenging the supremacy of their male contemporaries as luminaries and independent creative talents in their own right. It has been nearly 20 years since the conception and then organization by the valiant um, Nishimaya 
of the Soaring Voices exhibition that was first exhibited at the Contemporary Ceramic Museum at Shigaraki Toge no Mori in 2007, and then traveled to Paris before making an extensive tour uh, across the United States. It was at that first venue when I first encountered the work of Hayashi Kaku and fell in love with her work. Furthermore, it should be noted that the Soaring Voices exhibition was actually a catalyst for opening doors to these extremely talented and arguably overlooked artists. The subsequent international recognition and acceptance has awakened the Japanese arbiters of taste that had previously been fairly restricted and underappreciated. In fact, the English title of that exhibition called Soaring Voices, Contemporary Japanese Women's Ceramic Arts in English is not at all in line with the Japanese title that failed to include any gender reference or implication as per the dictates of the director of the organizing institution. Nearly simultaneous to that well-traveled exhibition was the Touch Fire exhibition at Smith College, curated in part by our speaker tonight, Professor Todate, who will expand on our understanding and reveal the importance of that short-lived exhibition, and even more significantly, its insightful and beautifully illustrated accompanying catalog. I personally returned to see that exhibition twice and hear presentations by two of its featured artists. Hayashi's work was also uh, featured in the marvelous 2017 exhibition of the, the Gitter Yellen Collection in the New Orleans Museum of Art. Most recently is the Born of Fire exhibition at the Crow Museum in Dallas, featuring the works of Japanese women clay artists from the collection of Carol and Jeffrey Horvitz. I am now delighted to report that this was just announced. The show will be going on the road, traveling next year to the museums at Washington and Lee University and the Dayton Art Institute. Here you see a masterwork by Hayashi Sensei. That was my first major acquisition by her and prominently featured in that show, as you can see at the Crow. Looking a bit backwards to post-war Japan, it was the creation of numerous state-of-the-art facilities and programs at universities and ceramic institutes that opened much needed doors to women. Competition for admission to the best programs was fierce and initially uh, dominated by male artists. Accessibility that has led to a profusion of women artists. In fact, today's ceramic programs with their diminished enrollment these days are dominated by women artists. Now at last these institutions even have female faculty members such as Todate Sensei now at Tama University and Hayashi Sensei formerly at Bunsei University. Furthermore, women dominate the rosters of ceramic programs at universities and art schools, winning major national awards, receiving major commissions, having noteworthy solo shows in art galleries, at prestigious department store venues, and even solo retrospectives at pro prominent museums. While fine potters continue to produce modern interpretations of traditional functional forms with age-old glazes, there is a growing domestic acceptance of non-functional sculptural work and a following from material neither traditional in form nor glaze in Japan, and most especially abroad. Women artists are at the vanguard of this development and the depth and range of contemporary Japanese ceramic art has never been richer. These women do not merely confront tradition, but rather seek to expose the very nature of clay, flaunting the limitations of their media or defying it altogether. Hayashi Kaku, as you so shortly see in here, is one such pioneering master artist. Here we have a view of images of our collector's tour um, when I brought clients to her home and studio in the autumn of 2019. Our current solo show is her first such exhibition outside of Japan, and I am truly honored and proud to, presenting, to be able to present this here in New York. 
Fortunately, or miraculously, nearly all of the works have found new homes from coast to coast in the United States and even in a, abroad. Uh, so now I would like to introduce and then address my first question to Date Sensei from our video recording. But first I'd like to give you a brief biography of her. Uh, Professor Todate uh, Kazuko is a renowned and highly respected scholar who specializes in craft history, ceramic history, and craft theory. She has curated numerous exhibitions of ceramic art in Japan and internationally. Her major publications in English include the exhibition catalogs for Touch Fire, Contemporary Japanese Ceramics by Women Artists that was held at Smith College Museum of Art in 2009. Fired Earth, Woven Bamboo, Contemporary Japanese Ceramics and Bamboo Art at the MFA Boston in 2013. And most recently, Clay as Soft Power, Shigaraki Ware in Post-War America, currently at the University of Michigan Museum of Art, on view through May 23. She is also the author of a comprehensive volume, one essential to any ceramic scholar titled Nihon Kingen Dai Toge Shi, The History of Modern Japanese Ceramics, which was first published in 2016. She served as chief curator of the Ibaraki Ceramic Art Museum and is currently professor of art history, as I said, at Tama Art University in Tokyo and visiting professor at Aichi University of Art in Aichi Prefecture. So my first question to Todate Sensei. Though we know that many of the most celebrated Japanese women clay artists today graduated from university ceramic programs and studied under great masters, there are also many more women who won prizes and acclaim for their work as students, but were never heard from again. This is a pattern you mentioned in your essay if for the catalog, the catalog of Touch Fire that was published over 13 years ago. Could you tell us about the landscape for women in the field as it stands today and what has changed since then? What barriers still exist to increase retention rates and those that hinder the building of a full-time career for these women? Sensei. Hello, everyone. My name is Kazuko Todate, a professor at Tama Art University, where I teach ceramics history and craft history. This time, I would like to talk about the current situation of women ceramic artists in Japan. Today, the ceramic situation has changed dramatically. Kaku Hayashi was one of the earliest female students at Tokyo University of the Arts to study ceramics, and in Hayashi's time, most students were male. However, there are more female students at the University of the Arts today. The same is true at Tama Art University, where I work. Nowadays, there are more female students in ceramics and other crafts as well. It seems that there are more female students applying to art universities than male students. Men seem to try to study something that will more definitely lead to income than ceramics or art. Women tend to choose what they are interested in or want to do anyway. The fact that public art universities began to accept female students after 1945 was the biggest factor in the increase in the number of female ceramic artists. And the fact that female ceramic artists like Kaku Hayashi, who continued to make ceramics after graduation and marriage, became a good example for young women, female students. 
and helped change the ceramic old situation greatly. In summary, more and more women like Hayashi are getting married and raised children while continuing to make ceramics to further their careers. In Japan, there are many cases of married couples who are both ceramic artists, and in the past, husbands were sometimes jealous when their wives were more highly regarded than themselves. Wives were sometimes a little hesitant to create, feeling that they should not stand out more than their husbands. However, today's young couples who are ceramic artists are increasingly supportive of each other on an equal footing. However, there still seems to be a bit of the old mindset among young male ceramic, ceramic artists that they must earn more than their wives. In fact, a male graduate student of ceramics I taught asked me this question. I'm getting married soon, but my girlfriend earns more than me. Will it be okay? No problem, I replied. No matter who earns more, the husband or the wife, the one who earns more will just be able to support themselves better. It seems that the situation of ceramics in Japan overlaps with the, the gender issues in Japanese society as a whole. In Japan, there are pottery families that have been in existence for generations, and in the past, the family name was passed down from generation to generation by men, especially the eldest son. In recent years, however, there have been cases of women taking over family name that have been held by men lies for generations. In the Tokuda family, for example, a prestigious family in the Kutani area of Ishikawa prefecture, the name Tokuda Yasokichi has been passed down to men for three generations. But in 2010, the name Tokuda Yasukichi was succeeded by a woman for the first time. Although the name Yasokichi is a man's name, she is actually a woman. Japan has long valued family and ancestors more than individuals, and has a tradition of male lineage inheritance, but women are gradually changing this history. Um, I will thank uh, Todate Sensei from afar. Um, I, I don't know if you saw me, I was almost hysterically laughing when she was talking about the jealousy and power of the uh, husbands of some of the more, the more talented women. And I've encountered this quite a number of times and had to deal with it. In addition to try and encourage many times for women artists to uh, elevate their prices internationally because for the quality of the work, they're, they're a ridiculous bargain compared to their male counterparts. And I've met with much resistance with the sole exception of Fujikasa Satoko. And you saw a picture of her with her husband in front of her uh, amazing work at the Metropolitan Museum. And he's one of these very rare Japanese husbands who's retired from a career of teaching sculpture at uh, Tokyo Geijutsu Daihaku to take care of their new son and to support her career. And I had arguments with him at the very beginning that he was 
totally overrating her art, her art as a brand new master's recipient. Um, and I have now totally changed course that he was exceptionally right. Her work is uh, sculpture and not clay art, and we have to value her work on a different uh, level than many of her colleagues. So thank you, Tadate-san. Uh, my next question is to uh, our guest artist today, Hayashi Kaku. And as we have heard, the advent of the Japanese university ceramics programs in the post-war years have enabled women to receive training for the first time. Uh, sensei, you were part of this earliest generation studying at Tokyo University of the Arts, which such renowned masters as Fujimoto Nodo, Tamura Koichi, and Asano Akira. But even more remarkably, you went on to become a ceramics professor yourself. Could you tell us how you started the ceramics program at Bunsei University of Art, and what were some of the challenges and rewards you encountered in shaping your own curricula? How have you seen the situation changing for women clay artists, especially for those in such influential leadership positions? Thank you. Hayashi Sensei? え、東京芸大の、え、工芸科の陶芸専攻っていうのは in, in 1963, Tokyo University of the Arts established a ceramic art major in the Department of Crafts. I entered three about, uh, I entered there about 10 years later, so I would be considered part of the second generation. Our class was about half women at that time. Uh, ま、え、学長、学部長が挨拶に伺ったところ、ま、もう there are always difficulties of understanding over the teaching of ceramic art at university. Mashiko, which is famous for mashikoyaki, is one of the major pottery centers in Japan, as you may know. Just before Bunsei University of Art was established, the president of the university went to visit Mashiko and talked to one famous potter. And he said, they do not need to study pottery at university because we have apprenticeship. That was 1998、the Bunsei University of Art was established in 1999, but Utsunomiya Bunsei Junior College was established in 1989. I have taught there too since 1994. In uh, その
党が工芸論の講師として私に声をかけてくださったのがきっかけです。えー、その後4年生大学の設立の準備委員会のメンバーに抜擢されました。Back in 1992, Shimotsuke Newspaper Company organized a lecture which I titled Find Each Impression Developing One's Sixth Sense. In attendance was Hidefumi Ueno. Who was the chairman of Utsunomiya Bunsei Junior College at that time? And Kenji Ueno, who was vice president. They were so impressed by my talk that they asked me if I wanted to teach craft theory at their college as soon as the lecture ended. That was the beginning of my teaching life. They also took me as a core member of their. <laughs> Committee in preparation of establishing Bunsei University of Art and of their graduate level master course later on. 大学院修士課程のも続けて創設しました。陶芸をどうしても学問の世界へ位置づけることを目標にしました。そして短大時代から数えると1994年から2017年までの23年間生徒,生徒の指導にあたったわけですけど何よりも力を入れたのは、えー、生徒たちの土や釉薬の基礎実験それに基づいた制作ですそれをもをって自ら困難に直面した時に戻ることができる基礎的な知識が備わることを大切にしました。We kept to our purpose, which we identify as ceramic art is an academic discipline. I taught ceramic art for 23 years, from 1994 to 2017, and I put my effort into exploring the basic experiment. Experimentation of clay and glaze more than anything else. If students can produce their work with those basic skills, they can fall back on them when they have any difficulties with creative activities. Gaxeta, 土から釉薬、そして焼成の仕方まで、えー、各工程にある幅広い選択肢と組み合わせがあり、何度も繰り返,すきあ繰り返し挑戦することが、えーこ,のまあ、この組み合わせがどんな結果を生むかを自分で解明していかなくてはなりません。そしてそれが一番重要なことなので、えー、学問として陶芸をやることだと思っていました。There are so many doors open to each student.Pottery has so many processes along the way.Choice of clay, glaze, firing.Each process has many options and there are so many combinations.So you have to try again and again. Till you can solve which combination will work for what. I think this is the most important part of understanding pottery as ceramic art as an academic discipline. Kuden ya deshiri seido dado tsuyoku no kotte i masu ga, sanchi ni chikai naka de daigaku no hoko se no chigai ni taisu pressure wa honto ni o kikata to doji ni. どのようにして共存していくかを常に考え続けました。However, tradition and apprenticeship are still family rooted, which is completely opposite what we do. We felt so much pressure that different directions exist nearby, but we also had to keep thinking about how we could coexist. えー、男女の差が縮まることに随分も私も力を入れましたが
、えー、現実としては、まあ、2022年のリサーチですが工芸の代表的な団体の理事の構成は女性がまだ1から 3% であるっていうのが現状です。私自身少なくとも学生たちには男女の区別は一切していません。一人の作家として互いに尊重で,できる存在であることが大事に、まあ、そういうふうに大事にしてほしいと願ってます。Unfortunately, major professional o r g a n i z a t i o n of ceramic art in Japan have only one to three percent women in board director position as of 2022, even after we tried very hard to narrow the gap. Of course, we've been encouraging a completely different situation to our students, yet, this is still the reality. We truly hope that. Every artist can respect each other as an artist standing on the same level. Thank you, Sensei.、Um, I have to tell our audience that、uh, this is a woman who, obviously, besides being thoughtful, articulate, and motivated and determined,、um, is such a great teacher that I had to literally、um, or figuratively knock on her door. For、um, I guess about 14 years, for her to be able to do the show that we have now. She devotes so much time to her students and to her practice. It's quite extraordinary. So、um, she's still fighting the fight. And, and let's hope that over time, with the recognition that women clay artists are receiving across the Western world from Australia to、uh, Prague. Uh, that uh, things will start to change in Japan more dramatically. I also want to say that in her work,、um, we have encountered in Soaring Voices and the Gitter Yellow show at Noma will hopefully be in a show, will be in a show that will hopefully open at the Art Institute of Chicago、uh, late next year, focusing on masterworks by Japanese women clay artists. Uh, and that we're hoping that show will travel across the country. It's being organized、uh, fearlessly by Carol Horvitz,、uh, drawing material from their collection. And、uh, Hayashi Sensei's work can be found in museums worldwide, including Hupei in China, LACMA in California, Shigaraki、uh, Togenomori in Japan, and the Museum of Fine Arts of Boston. So now for our next speaker. I would like to introduce Russell or Rusty Kelty, who is the curator of Asian art at the Art Gallery of South Australia, where he has worked on a number of exhibitions and catalogs, including this year's Pure Form Japanese Sculptural Ceramic.、Uh, and then she, Haru Chiyota, Absence Embodied in 2019,、uh, prefaced by Samurai Transformed of 2018. Uh, Ever Blossoming the Flower in Japanese Art in 2016, and Treasure Ships, the Art in the Age of Spices in 2015.、Uh, Rusty specializes in the art and culture of Japan with a particular emphasis on global trade and the influence of foreign ideas and commodities in painting during the Edo period. He received his BA in art history from Colorado State University. Completed the MA in art history at the University of Adelaide and is currently a doctoral candidate at the University of Sydney, researching the depiction of foreign ships in Japan in the Edo period. So, my next question is to Rusty. When conceiving, planning, and organizing your seminal pure form show at the Art Gallery of South, South Australia, You must have been overwhelmed by the depth of talent and the incredible range of skills demonstrated by so, so many masterful ceramic artists working in Japan today. Consequently, among the many, many artists from which to choose, how did you select the women clay artists featured in your show? And what role did those women clay artists play in shaping your exhibition's narrative? Rusty? Well, thank you very much, Joan, and, and thank you to the other panelists,、uh, Hayashi Sensei, and of course, Todate Sensei in absentia, who、uh, I drew greatly on her scholarship in that Smith College 
fantastic show, Touch Fire, uh, which really inspired uh, the, the aspect of women ceram female ceramicists in pure form. And so Pure Form uh, was presented at the art gallery from May 21st to November 6th. And we were very lucky to receive about 100,000 visitors, which is an exceptional number. And I think speaks to the quality, not only of female ceramicists, but of male ceramicists in the post-war period. And the, the exhibition uh, really looked or drew from all major collections around Australia. Uh, cultural institutions, as well as private collections, such as the Raffi Star Collection, which uh, composed about half of the 112 pieces that were in the show. And so I approach your question in a rather roundabout manner. I thought since most of your, the people who would be attending this uh, Zoom uh, uh, lecture, I would give them a brief walk through the show with some installation images, which actually would contextualize uh, where female ceramicists sat and how uh, fascinating uh, local populations of ceramicists and visitors found that particular section. So of course, the show began with uh, the great break in 1948. Uh, you see Yagi Kazuo in that classic image in, in Higashiyama in the Eastern Hills in Kyoto, carrying one of his most, uh, what would become one of his most important works of art, Mr. Samson's Walk, and a cabinet filled with uh, works which seem to present or present this amazing break from uh, ceramics history, which occurred in the early, you know, in the post-war period. Moving through the exhibition, uh, the next uh, uh, section was called The Shape of Design, which looks at the amazing emergence of uh, forms and shapes, which were both uh, non, could be viewed as non-utilitarian sculptures, but also works of art to uh, use as for ikebana and more utilitarian purposes which in the post-war period, artists were free to kind of seek their own voice and their own style. Continuing through the exhibition, uh, we came to uh, the porcelain gallery called Defying Gravity, uh, which really ex was an exceptional lesson in the, the new ways to use porcelain uh, and really uh, contrasted people's preconceived notions of what porcelain is and what it was used for. And artists such as Fukami Sueharu and Nagai Shigekazu really confounded our audiences in ways that I had not quite anticipated. The last section of the show, uh, well, the second to last section of the show looked at the flavors of clay. So an homage to the six old kilns and artists who are revitalizing those kilns. Uh, and the last section uh, was dedicated to female ceramicists, which I titled Super Women, a play on super girls, uh, Torbate Kazuko's fantastic essay in Touch Fire, which looked at the history of female ceramicists. And this really was an exceptionally popular uh, moment in the exhibition. And these works were largely drawn from uh, cultural collections around Australia, uh, and of course, private collections as well. And one of the great moments in the show, uh, you can see in the background, was actually between Tanaka uh, Yu, young ceramicist, uh, and Suboi Asuka. These two fantastic works. And Tanaka Yu's work became the unofficial mascot of the show. People absolutely could not believe that it was a ceramic rather than furoshiki. And it was a, a curatorial moment for me because sitting next to, of course, Suboi Asuka, who was one of the first and most important uh, female ceramicists. And the choosing of these works um, was made relatively simply because of what was available in Australia at the time. And this was one of the great aspects of the show was many of these works, while they had been on display, had never been put in a context from the Second World War forward and a series of different contexts for people to understand this amazing transition that took place. And female ceramicists, you know, the, the art of the female ceramicists was particularly important and captivating for our audience members. Uh, we created a separate section for them because one, we wanted uh, people without Japanese language experience wouldn't necessarily know whether a ceramicist was a male or female just from their work. And so we wanted to make that very clear. And secondly, when you went through this as part of the show, it was very clear how dynamic and how uh, different female ceramicists 
uh, works and sculptures were. And these two sitting side by side was a great coup for me uh, as a curator and a great curatorial moment. Uh, and forever I will think when I see this image of the great quote by Koiki Shoko, who uh, is Joan, represented by Joan Mervis, and the great quote on your website, which states, first I imagine the shape that dances a certain pulsating rhythm, which then extends to my hands and lead that to weave a form from the mound of clay before me. And I thought this was such an interesting way of expressing uh, an approach to clay that was so different and kind of ingenious uh, from their male counterparts. Uh, and so the choice was, was a wonderful opportunity to present uh, an array of different ceramicists, uh, female ceramicists to, the, to a public uh, who had largely not seen them before. Uh, included in that section of the exhibition was of course Matsuda Yuriko's wonderful uh, foot uh, laden with chrysanthemums exuberant sculptural foot, as well as Mishima Kimio's fantastic box with uh, newspaper wrapped bottles, which people actually could not believe until they got closer to the work that it wasn't, this, wasn't cardboard and bottles, but in fact clay. Other artists included in this particular section uh, were, uh, of course, as you we were speaking about before, Fujikasa Satoko, who seems to be able to uh, imbue her sculptures with a sense of energy and chi as she describes it, as well as uh, Kishi Eiko's a wonderful shamat laden uh, sculptural ceramics. So this, this exhibition was a great opportunity to present, of course, post-war ceramics generally to the, to the public, but it was really the female ceramicists that captured a, much interest uh, from our patrons, just the absolute ingenuity and creativity that they displayed uh, totally shocked them. And, you know, from my own curatorial perspective, they injected an amazing sense of uh, energy and creativity into post-war Japanese ceramics. Thank you, Rusty. You made my case very eloquently and beautifully. And I am uh, delighted and relieved that Australians have responded to the genius of uh, women clay ceramicists in the, in, in the same way that Americans have uh, been so um, captivated. Uh, personally, I found your juxtaposition between the work of Tanaka Yu, who who's an under 30 brand new rising star, and the recently deceased Atsuboyatska, who I believe passed away in the course of your exhibition, but both women who fun, uh, focus on textiles and the importance of textiles and the tactility of textiles in remarkably different ways to put them together is the perfect coda to where women clay, women's position is in the world of ceramics. Mm. Thank you, thank you, thank you so much, Rusty. Pleasure. I would now like to turn to uh, Minalia Levitt, is a native of Philadelphia who moved to central North Carolina in 1975 after completing her undergraduate education at Bryn Mawr College and then the University of Pennsylvania Me School of Medicine. She practiced internal medicine for 26 years in Raleigh, North Carolina, including time teaching through the University of North Carolina and working for the local nonprofit hospice. She has been a docent at the North Carolina Museum of Art for 19 years and is currently the secretary of the North Carolina Art Museum Foundation Board of Directors. She has also served on several nonprofit boards in the past. She and her doctor husband, Ron Schwartz, have a collection of contemporary art glass and a growing, I can say really growing, collection of Japanese contemporary ceramics. In addition, she's an avid knitter and reader of historical fiction and loves to travel abroad. And as I mentioned, uh, she and I were both in Japan um, as recently as three weeks ago together, having um, a wonderful time in autumnal Japan. So my question to Mina is, as we've mentioned, you are a doctor in North Carolina, and we have always been interested to learn about how one becomes a collector particularly how those from outside the art world and as an American encounter and enter this field. Could you please share with us your collecting journey? For instance, how and when did you begin to collect Japanese contemporary ceramics? 
And what did you find so intriguing about the work of Japanese women artists in particular? Minna? Thank you, Joan. And thank you so much for the opportunity to be part of this panel tonight. I'm very honored. Um, Ron is from New York and I am from Philadelphia. So we both grew up seeing great art in major museums. Since marrying over 40 years ago, we've always been interested in the art world and we visit galleries and museums, both locally and on our travels. Um, after filling our house with posters and then prints and then paintings, the walls were full and we started collecting art glass in 2002 when our son went off to college. We so enjoyed meeting other collectors, traveling with them in Europe and the United States and watching um, glass artists who have to usually work in groups in their studios and during demonstrations. On a trip to New York City in 2006, we bought the piece you see here by Kato Tsubusu. It is called number 16 Sake Pour, P-O-U-R form from 2005. And is obviously Celadon and very contemporary. We were attracted to the modernity of this piece and to the glazes. And we thought it would look really great on our dining room table. We had no intention of starting another collection. And then the next year in 2007, we went to Japan, that's my husband, the photographer, on a trip focusing on Japanese gardens. We stayed on for a while in Kyoto and visited ceramic galleries and made a few purchases. We were so impressed by the Japanese aesthetic. It just spoke to us. The attention to the details of objects and how precious everyday objects were and how valued they were. But our collecting journey in Japanese ceramics didn't really begin until the next year, 2008, when we encountered this work by Ohi Toshio at an art fair. Um, and here's several views of the same piece. Um, this is an Ohi ceremonial vessel from 2007. We fell in love with it at once. I think we were attracted to the shape and the irregular lip but it was mostly the deep amber glaze, um, how reflective it was and um, how the reflection seemed to correlate with our glass collection. Of course, the Ohi family reputation dating back 11 generations to 1660s and their history with the tea ceremony were pretty impressive too. Here, um, you're seeing a winter scene at our house with the original piece on the left and another work called entitled Sansu or Ceremonial Vessel, also by Ohi Toshio, who now has assumed the family title of Chosaman. Um, and in the center is a cast glass work by Oliver Lesso. So we began collecting more Japanese ceramics and we went to more galleries and we've now been to Japan three more times. Our collection has grown, particularly over the last eight years. We're interested in all varieties of Japanese clay art. We are trying to focus on living artists and sculptural works, although we don't always succeed in that. Um, and we look for connections historically among the Japanese clay artists and um, between them and the works of North Carolina pottery which is quite local to us and which we know so well. There are many con connections there. However, among our most prized pieces are the works by Japanese women artists. Here are some that catch, these are the works that usually catch the eye of any visitors to our house. And here are some from our collection. This piece is by Tokumuro Kyoko, it is it is Rising Snake Island from 2014, unglazed porcelain with a multitude of flowers and obviously the rising snake. In addition, Tokumaro-san used glass to create the water effect coming down. Um, we have donated this to a local teaching university museum and we hope it will be used there. That piece is so inventive, we just couldn't resist it. Organicity also speaks to us. As you can see on the left in the shell shape, 
by Koiki Shoko from 2014. It has, it's very special to us. We love the glaze and there's a tiny little silver star on the inside that visitors love to find on their own. And on the right, an incredible work with Anaba Chikako that you can also see in the screenshot behind me. Uh, both of these are glazed stoneware. The Anaba, it's hard to keep your hands off of it. It is a sculptural vessel from 2016 that is ribbed, curled, leaf-shaped. And Inaba-san takes a lot of her, her inspiration from lotus leaves. And then we've also been fascinated by the varied surfaces. And on the left, you see an artist you just saw before, Tanaka Yu, a recent purchase entitled Tsutsumimono from 2021. Coil built and supported as she goes. There's not a bowl on the inside. There, the glaze lay layers are numerous. And I'm so excited that this piece will soon be here. On the right is a work by Fuchino Sachiko, Form 20-9 from 2020. It is a uh, airbrush, slip, and color, obviously a flower-inspired sculpture that has been airbrushed in gradations of charcoal gray and accents of light gray. Uh, putting light on this is just makes it absolutely pop. It's both natural and the gradations of color are so compelling. These ceramic artists all are thinking outside the box. And I think that their art school and sculpture training is clearly evident. Each one tells its own unique story. Although traditional Japanese forms and glazes and unglazed wood-fired works are important parts of our collection, my husband and I feel that the work of the female artists represents significant contemporary trends and that these works point toward the future. They're totally unexpected and entrancing at the same time, and they are very, very attractive to the American audience. Thank you, Mina. Um, it was a joy traveling with you and Ron through Japan because both of you have such a keen eye and have a, a broad-based perspective on what you're looking at. And um, I just have to say that uh, Tanaka Yu is the poster girl, certainly for calendar year 2021, um, featured obviously at, at Russell's uh, Rusty show. She was also featured in uh, Minneapolis Institute of Art recently, as well as at the Seattle Art Museum, and very conspicuously at the Musée Guimet in their recent show of women clay artists. Um, she is the future, and Fujino is one of my all-time favorites. Thank, thank you so much, Mina. I'd like to turn back to Hayashi Sensei with, an, with her last question. Um, a surprisingly high percentage of Japanese women clay artists, especially those of the youngest tier, work in either black or white, or have abandoned color altogether. Many others may work in monochrome, but have avoided colorful surface decoration. Why and how have you stayed focused on color, and how has that become a defining characteristic of your oeuvre? Sensei? Uh, まあ、あの、I have not focused on color exactly and it is only one of the results of my artistic investigations. え、
あとはどんな医学を使うかとか重ね方とかその選択によっても本当にあと詳細の条件によってもあの、まあ、どう決めていくか、えーまあ、科学変化ですから、えー、無限に可能性があると思ってます。Blaze and fire carry a high risk when producing works, as we've seen fantastic、uh, works of Japanese clay artists on the site show. Whether unglazed, bisque fired,、uh, glaze one color and fired, or glaze with many colors and fired, there are many options to explore. And then there is also overgrazing. Layer on layer of glaze, the selection which glaze, how you layer, and how you fire,、uh, each choice and each combination leads to different chemical changes. まあ、調整ですで、えー、あごめんなさいちょっとすいませんあの土とそれから形それからデザイン釉薬の焼き方全てがまあ一つの結果として作品になるのでそれをか繰り返してあの確認しているだけに過ぎないのであのうん。大学のが残っちゃってる。あ,あ、それで私はこのあの大学では今あの画像で見てもらったようにえこのようにあの釉薬のまああの色で分けていくことによってそのラベルを分けることによって釉薬の原料のあの大学受験で。数学と理科がないのにはいあの勉強あのさせましたであの。美術の大学っていうのはやっぱり科学とか数学とかそういうものをあの、うん、が受験ではないので皆さんあのそれがそんなに好きではない学生が来ていましたですからその子どもたちにど,どのように、えー、こう理解させるかっていうことで考えた、まあ、教育のプログラムです。Sorry for that, the confusion, <laughs> just the, a bit different part we've read. But、um, back to the subject.、Uh, she had to teach those chemicals to students at university who hated even think, thinking about it. In Japan, we have an interesting situation that the art students are not known to be good at math and science. This is maybe because university admission doesn't require those two subjects. Yet, glaze is science, especially chemistry,、uh, composition, chemical reaction, thermal reaction, reduction, oxidation. These are all important to understand. <laughs> 土とかそれからまあ形デザインそれから釉薬焼き方まあ全てがこういろんな選択の中で一つの結果として作品になるわけですからまあそれを繰り返し繰り返し確認したり検証したりするっていうだけに過ぎないです。We thoroughly investigated in each play. Glaze and firing and quantify them as basic data with all students. We share those data and everyone can immediately try and find new c o m b i n a t i o n as part of their studies. Form is important, but color is more important individually. まあ、この、まあ、科学変化は無限の可能性があって。でそこがまあ陶芸の面白いくてまた困難なところでもあると思うんですけど、えー、その研究と発見とかそれから再現を繰り返している途中であり、まあ、常に自分の求める色を追求している、まあ、今私もその途中段階でやると思ってます。We keep investigating clay, form, design, 
blaze, how to fire, and the work is just the end of result. Uh, chemical change has endless possibilities, which is the most interesting part of ceramic art and also the most difficult part. I am still reaching for another result always, and it continues forever. Thank you, Thank you Sensei. Mm -hmm. uh, as the daughter of two organic chemists and a graduate student in Japanese art history, I understand exactly what you are speaking of that a foundation in organic chemistry is, is really critical to understanding your media and your processes. Um, secondly, I just like to add the piece we saw before the piece on the screen. Uh, kindly, um, due to the generosity of the amazing uh, Gordon Broadfear, is heading to Minneapolis Institute of Arts to join their prestigious collection. And we can't wait to see it on view in its new forthcoming home. Thank you, Sensei. I, I would like to now move back for my final question to Minna. Uh, Minna-san, you have traveled to Japan several times to further explore the worlds of Japanese ceramics. Be specifically, can you please tell us about your experience of meeting uh, Hayashi Kaku in 2019? And expanding on that, how has meeting her in person possibly changed your perspective on her artworks? And is that true with other artists as well? And what influence do such personal encounters have on your collecting practice? Minna? Thank you, Joan. On our visit to Hayashi Sensei's home and studio, and there you could see the entrance, in 2019, we knew that we were entering the residence of a true artist. Hayashi Sensei told us about building and then having to rebuild her house after a major storm. Each part of the house had been designed with care and with her artistic flair. As she spoke, it was clear to me that she is the perfect combination of intellect and emotion. Nature influences all of her works, but her scientific knowledge and exploration has led her to a way to make larger and stronger works. The piece we selected attracted our attention as soon as we walked in. It is from 2019. It is called uh, Snow Moon Flower from the Kegon, Kegon series. Um, and it has dripping red glaze, white glaze, and ash glaze, and obviously uh, uh, linear carving on it. Um, on the right side, it looks very rural to me, while on the left, it is, it is just so much more uh, refined. Your eye seems to be drawn to that left side over and over again. And then it has two sides to it. Notice how different it is from the front to the back. After discussing her process, Hayashi Sensei showed us a wall filmed with framed articles illustrating each step, the approach of a true professor. When you meet an artist and see the breadth of their work, it is sometimes an experience of immediate understanding. And then for me, with my scientific background, I want to learn all I can. I want to know about plays. I want to know about processes. I want to know about procedures. Part of our reason to collect is to be able to use our clay art to teach others. So the more we know about each piece, the more attractive, um, excuse me, the more we know about each piece, the more attractive both the artist and each work becomes. We've learned a lot from gallery owners and from other collectors, but nothing surpasses the chance to learn directly from the artist. And when the artist is also a professor such as Hayashi Kaku, the depth of information transmitted is greatly magnified. We remember all our studio visits and are much more likely to purchase a work made by somebody we have visited. In this case, my connection with Hayashi Sansei remains strong. Here is a gift that she gave each of us 
and I use it daily next to my stove as my spoon rest. Thank you, Mina. Uh, that answers the question most beautifully. I love these Mount Fuji dishes, which are the babies to one of the pieces in our collection uh, and the show it for those of you who might join us. Um, I would like to turn my next question to Date Sensei, who has recorded her responses. Uh, the question to her was, new ideas and movements and arts can be exciting to encounter while simultaneously challenging, perhaps even destabilizing to confront. As we have heard, there's been an explosion of talent in both creative expression and in sheer enrollment numbers of women clay artists who have benefited from the university training they've received. But as you have previously written, some of the first generation of women ceramicists were met with severe criticism. Can you tell us more about this response from both scholars and institutions, as well as from the general public? What aspect of women's art was daring and shocking, perhaps threatening, when women touched clay? Let's hear her response. After the war, female ceramic artists who graduated from art universities made their own breasts and buttocks as motif of their works. This questioned what it meant to be a woman, and at the same time, it meant an affirmation of femininity. Male ceramic artists, however, did not use the female body as a motif in their work. Figurative ceramics and figures were produced by male cer ceramic artists such as Numata Ichiga at the beginning of the 20th century. But they didn't produce any nudes. They did make animals, plants, and crossed figures, though. Even in Japan, there are many nudes in the world of sculpture, but men in the world of ceramics did not make nudes. But since the post-war period, especially since the 1980s, Women ceramic artists such as Tashima Etsuko have turned parts of women's bodies into works of art. Moreover, they are colorful, powerful, and sometimes huge, exceeding human height. This was a threat to male ceramic artists because the female ceramic artist did not hesitate to create works of art from women's body parts. The male ceramic artist did not work with under their own unspoken rules. At that time, ceramic critics and researchers were almost exclusively male. The conservative male critics negatively criticized the new style of women ceramic artists. Since 2000, however, female scholars of the same generation as Etsuko Tashima, such as myself, have taken a fresh look at the trends of female ceramic artists in the 1980s and evaluated their works in articles and have re-evaluated their works to a higher regard. I have studied the history of ceramics since the 1980s and have closely followed the new trends of women ceramic artists. When I was a curator, I curated the exhibitions, Leaders of Contemporary Japanese Ceramics in 2001, Women Ceramic Artists Who Bear the 21st Century in 2009, 
and Sasai Fumie and Tashima Etsuko in the Flower Garden, 2009. And also Touch Fire, 2009, at the Smith College Museum of Art. These have helped to change the old view of ceramics by showing the world the boldness and freedom of expression of women ceramic artists. As mentioned above, the history of women ceramic art can be overlaid with the state of Japanese society and its values. Japan is a gender backward country in the world, but I believe that the innovative works of women ceramic artists can be one of the forces that change the state of Japanese society. Thank you. Thank you so much. Wow, that was uh, music to my ears. I think we have to convince Todate Sensei to put her comments to uh, paper and get that published. I think that could be very important for the field and um, her voice is a powerful voice. Uh, for my final question, as we are winding down here, the man gets the last word, uh, Rusty. Uh, contemporary Japanese sculptural ceramics is a field that is still being introduced to new audiences. Can you tell us a bit more, you intimated this earlier, how Australian audiences responded to? How specifically did they respond and receive this genre? Many of whom may have been encountering this material, both functional and sculptural, for the first time. What did you find to be unanticipated and what was surprising to you? Rusty? Um, people who came to the exhibition brought with them a preconceived notion of what Japanese ceramics are. And in Adelaide and Australia, generally, Japanese ceramics and the general consciousness is understood as beautiful, beautifully glazed, austere, rustic bowls and vases for use for ikebana, for tea. And what they encountered in pure form were these amazingly uh, exuberant, large, complicated, technical, uh, beautiful sculptures that many of which are still used for ikebana, but evoke a sense of art rather than use, uh, which in Japan, of course, which is a very kind of Western concept, these, this divide in Japan, they function coherently together and have done for many hundreds of years. And so people were very surprised at the scale of them, the size, and a lot of people in Adelaide in particular, uh, their experience with Japanese clay really stopped at say, Hamada Shoji and the great Ninge artists and uh, you know those wonderful utilitarian wares. And so for many, this was their first experience uh, with sculptural ceramics. And people, I think people came back again and again and again because they just could not believe how diverse the field was considering it's, it's only 50, 60 years old and how, how unbelievably different each artist is in their own particular aesthetic. And so it was a great moment of, I think, awakening hopefully in Adelaide and definitely in Australia to this very diverse and wonderful field. And the, and the female ceramicists by far were the most appreciated uh, for their uh, sometimes uh, overt sensuality, uh, exceptional creativity and ingenuity. Well, that's true. I, I find it actually remarkable that your show and the show at the Musée Guimet in Paris were simultaneous, um, although theirs focused exclusively on 13 Japanese women clay artists. Mm -hmm. And I went to that show repeatedly just to watch the people and to see the response and how crowded that gallery was compared to other areas of the institution. Uh, and um, I, I think it's a universal response to these women's work uh, from obviously uh, Paris to Adelaide is a, a different environment, but the response is the same. Uh, so thank you very much. And thank you to all our speakers. 
I have a couple questions that have come in um, on the side. And since I have you, Russell, I'd just like to ask you the first question, if I may. Um, Rusty, having seen the response of your Australian um, visitors, uh, what aspects of Japanese sculptural ceramics do you think you would like to pursue as a collector, a collecting curator in the future? And how would you go, what is important to you to continue the dialogue with your audience about this field? Great question. Um, just looking around Australia, the, the show really brought together tranches of almost decades of different uh, sculptural ceramics. And so combined, they create something that's quite, uh, uh, it gives you a sense of scope and scale and time from the 1940s all the way to present day. And so when I look around Australia and I think about where the Art Gallery of South Australia sits, female ceramicists would be right at the top of my list. And adding another branch to that kind of the national collections, I think would be a, a very smart way of going. And I just think there's such strength particularly with, you were saying, Tanaka Yu is the future, and she certainly looks like it. Uh, there's such strength in Japanese ceramics. Uh, it's, it must be, and this is no, um, this is not a, a negative comment to any other country or civilization, but Japan must be the most um, uh, creative in terms of ceramics at the present moment. I just find it uh, infinite uh, kind of permutations of clay that appear in Japan. Just, it does, the culture is, exceedingly rich and so I hope we, we we can continue to grow our own collection and national collections as well and saying that I hope that we can also bridge that gap with mo modern collection modern kind of artists like Kondo Yuzo and Tomimoto Kenkichi uh, who really laid the groundwork for a lot of these female ceramicists. Perfect we look forward to um, watching what Australia does going forward and um, I, I hope you continue to feature this aspect of Japanese contemporary art within your institution. I have often said that when it comes to contemporary art, Japan leads the world in clay. And out of the 10 leading countries, it's number one through five. And then there's the rest of the world. Um, and maybe you would agree with that comment. I have another question for Hayashi Sensei. Um, and it's, it's sort of a question from one of our uh, people who know you well. We understand that you are dedicated to numerous children's charities. And in fact, between personally, between your work in that area and your teaching uh, responsibilities in the past that precluded you doing a show with us until now. But actually your work with the children is very moving and very important. And I'd love if you could just tell us a little bit about what you've done with these organizations over the past few years. Creative Rainbow Project ていうあの活動しています。で、ま、大きくはやはりあのこう例えば壁画のプロジェクト、それからトーキンっていうあのプロジェクト、トーキンは焼き物で目が見えない人に音で あの、音で、あの、しょ、ま、焼く温度を教えるとか、そういうことも are doing various activities as a group named Creative Rainbow Project. Lately, we have been focusing on two projects, uh, Mural and the Seven Colored Clay Ball. We are also working on a new environment education project about firing with recycled energy. で、盲学校の子供たちとの交流がまあそこで始まったんですが、その後児童養護施設、まああの個人ですね、に活動を広げて、そして幼児から小学校、中学校、高校と広げてます。Those volunteer activities are what I have always wanted to do. 
The chance came in 2000 through a great opportunity working with children who are visually impaired. After that, we expanded our activities to orphanages, uh, kindergartens, primary schools, junior high and senior high schools. あの、ここまであの、峠のみのボランティアしてたんですけど、2011年の3月のあの東日本大震災に電力の供給が止まったために、え、宮沢賢治の物語を中心とした壁画を作る、壁画プロジェクトもあの since the electricity supply stopped due to the Great East Japan earthquake in 2011, uh, we have focused on mural projects instead of pottery projects. Uh, making one big mural altogether develops a new side of children's creativity. あの、東日本大震災より After recovering from the great earthquake, we have started the seven colored cray wall project with the same children we worked with the first time. Coloring cray allows them to visually imagine their work. Uh, also, we provided a new method to make pottery, simplifying process that so that logically everybody can make their own work. ま、あの、七色地玉のプロジェクトは震災の復興が進んで始めから始めたんですが、再び盲学校の子供たちにこの七つの色を使ったあの色地で制作を実現しています。土を色分けすることによって視覚的に想像力を広げることに特化して、
Um, I wish you all, everyone in the audience, a wonderful holiday season and a terrific Oshongatsu for our friends in Japan. Um, our show, Farhashi Kaku, will continue for several weeks through the end of the year. Uh, coming up next year, I will be participating as ever since 1981 at the winter show, but this year uh, exclu doing exclusively a ceramic show featuring 10 major past artists and pairing them with 10 major leading artists, both male and female in the secondary case. And then for Asia Week, New York, uh, doing, an, I think, an, a very important show called Watamori Hiro and Painted Japanese Ceramics that will feature the work of our past um, genius, Watamori Hiro, and take him from the uh, student roster at uh, Kyoto uh, Geidai, working with Tomimoto, and bring this up to the present with uh, his contemporaries together with those who are continuing these traditions of surface patterning uh, in the current generation. So thank you all for joining us. Um, please stay tuned. This will be available online should you wish to watch it again or recommend it to your friends on YouTube, hopefully by Monday of next week. And um, I hope you all enjoy a safe and happy holiday. Thank you very much.